now. Give me a little bit about who you are right now. You know what you do. I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. I uh, write. Um, I'm retired from my day job, which is a big thrill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to the next 20 or 30 years. Um, I've been married twice. Um, but neither one of them turned out well, but my life is good. Yeah. My life how is How long ago did you have a situation that you're now free from? Well, I got married when I was 22, and I got divorced when I was 25, and I didn't think I'd live to be 25. Um, when we first moved to Cincinnati, after we'd been married and lived a couple places, um, we moved to Cincinnati and moved in with his parents. And uh, let me say now that all of this is long in the past, and he has okay. learned many lessons along the way, and he's a responsible person. But at the time, he was doing drugs and alcohol, and uh, I had no concept of drugs or alcohol because it was that long ago. And when he beat me really badly, my mother-in-law, with whom we lived, said, if you complain, we'll have you uh, committed to a mental hospital. So that's long enough ago that you know when mental hospitals, what? Yes, you could do that then. You yeah. could have your family, you could have your, f your family could put you in a mental hospital and you had no hope. Because you complained that you were being abused. Right. So did, did her husband abuse her? Was it something that, you know, went on in the family? I don't think he abused her, but I think she didn't want anybody to know that her her son had problems. And if I attempted to expose that in any way, um, that that would be the end of me as far as she was concerned. So I was afraid to do anything. My own mother uh, believed that anybody who was beaten deserved it. So and said so to me, so I know I, I could get no help from there her. There was no place for you to get help. I mean, was it? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, it was very early in the 70s. And if there was a woman helping women, I don't think it existed yet. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that it didn't exist yet, but it did soon after that. There, um, It was a time where if someone was raped or beaten, it was it's you against them you know that's who would believe you you're a woman 70s, the early 70s um, we hadn't the I was later on I worked on the equal rights amendment I became a feminist I was actively involved this was after this mm -hmm. now I went on to law school I did all sorts of things but at the time a husband could do pretty much what he wanted to my husband used to stop by my work on payday and pick up my check, even though I told them not to give it to him. Um, and fortunately, he got sick one one time, and I got my check and deposited it oh. so he couldn't get at it. Um, but he, he felt he had a right, and they felt he had a right. When I asked them not to give it, he says, it's your husband. He has a right to your check. Life has changed. How did you deal with that? I mean, now, you know, that we have the initiative to share, heal, and live, um, then, back in the 70s, how did you deal with that? Did you just internalize it and, and just keep going? I mean, how how do you think it affected you? Well, I can tell you, I went to work. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk much to people because I was such a nervous wreck. I went down to 90 pounds. Right now, I weigh 153 pounds. So you can imagine what 90 pounds looked on me. I, I look like, uh, like an Auschwitz victim. I mean, when you see pictures of them, Every bone stuck out. I was such a nervous wreck. I couldn't, uh, when my husband allowed me to eat because he controlled the money or gave me money to eat, um, then, then I get to eat. So I never had more than a meal a day, and sometimes I didn't even have that. So it wasn't just physical, you know, abuse. It was mental and, and emotional as well. And I was always afraid of what would happen next because with the drugs and alcohol, he didn't remember what he was doing. He was blacking out. So he would do things and not realize. And I was afraid he was going to kill me. He also was a hunter, so he had lots and lots of guns. So fortunately, I grew up in a more rural kind of uh, world. And so I knew to take the firing pins out of his guns. And that was good because one night I woke up in the middle of the night and uh, the gun was, a shotgun was pointed against the, my temple, and he pulled the trigger. And I was sure, I mean, that split second, I said, I'm dead. 
but you know when you wake up you're not going to think firing pins aren't in there all i could think was he realized that put the firing pin in and decided to shoot me but he didn't because he had just gone and loaded a shotgun and he went down to get another gun because that one didn't fire and he tripped down the steps and went through a glass door so he got cut badly enough that he had to we had to call the ambulance and he had to go to the doctor go to the hospital and uh, I got his parents to go with him saying he was too upset for me and went to my next door neighbor dragged a little suitcase over in my sewing machine and uh packed her car and the next morning when I went to work as usual when he got home he didn't remember what happened he had no mem remembrance at all of any of that and was ki quite astonished when I left him I figured he was too dangerous to me I would be dead I assumed I'd be dead so but here's the part that got me when I went to court the lawyer said, uh, well, y you're not going to get anywhere with him beating you or trying to kill you. The only way you're going to be able to get a divorce is that he doesn't have a job right now, so he's not supporting you. Me. I assumed he'd just have to go to jail, but they didn't care about that. What they cared about is whether or not he had a job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I said, too. I said, what? Are, that, you, are, you, are you kidding me? I mean, what? Yeah. And so the lawyer didn't even bring it up because he said they just tried a case right before me in which a woman had, a man had attempted to kill the woman mm -hmm. and he had been beating her and the judge just threw it out. So that but is that crazy. line of thinking, I can't even fathom that. I mean, that's just like something somebody would just put in a movie just to mess with your head. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's, uh, then he stalked me after that. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, so when you, when you, when you left mm -hmm. um, and he came home and, and he didn't remember what had happened, what happened then? Did he come looking for you? How long before you saw him again? It took him three days before he realized I wasn't there. If I'd known that, I would have left <laughs> earlier. <laughs> three days later, he called me at work and said, you didn't come home. I said, it's been three days. You didn't notice? He said, no, I guess not. Wow. Yeah. So at that point, he didn't come to your job looking for you or anything, but he didn't start stalking you until after you went to court? Uh, he, yeah, he waited, um, and he involved a member of my family who told him where I lived. Yes, a much younger and naive member of okay. my family. Okay. Who was not aware of the abuse that was going on? I don't think cared. 